summer in the city. Last year, that meant guns, gangs, and unprecedented violence. Tonight, in a revealing interview with Avery Haynes, one of Toronto's top cops breaks down just what went wrong and what's on the horizon for this summer. Avery. Gord, at this time last year, Danzig was just a street in Scarborough, a close-knit community with little violent crime. But all that changed July 16th, when Danzig became another word for tragedy. Tonight's Inside Story, Deputy Police Chief Peter Slowly's candid interview about a summer that changed this city. And people are just dodging bullets because that's falling left, right, and center like flies. 42, it was a crazy night in a series of crazy nights. Uh, Blackberry starts buzzing across the bedside table, and you're reading it, and you're just wondering if someone's playing a joke on you. The numbers kept rising on each notification in terms of the number of victims, and you just never see that. I don't care whether you're a police officer, an ambulance, a fire department, those are images that will be seared into your brain. July 16th, 2012, the most violent night this city has ever seen. There are people on the floor. I was trying to run for my safety. You know, everyone was trying to run to their safety. 25 people cut down by bullets at a street party on Danzig, two of them fatally. Cheyenne Charles will always be just 14 years old. Joshua Yasse was 23. Why? Because rival gangs, the Melvern crew and the Galloway boys decided to settle their beef in the midst of the crowded community barbecue. What do you see as the perfect storm that created that crazy summer? The recipe could be could be long, and I don't intend this to be a, a, an exclusive list. Well, clearly the Galloway boys have, have been on the radar charts. While they were dismantled at one point during an operation, uh, there's another generation that has, that has come up. Another generation with new tools. The gangs of this city went online to taunt each other. We saw a significant increase in, in gangs across the city using social media to intimidate, to insult each other, and then getting together physically to settle the scores that were taking place online. We have a much more robust social media capacity now to address that element of the perfect storm. Police also acknowledge they should have been a part of the community in a bigger way. So we created a neighborhood officer program and in every one of my divisions there's at least one neighborhood officer team in that most victimized or violent prone neighborhood that are now proactive developing relationships ahead of the storm. I think so many people when they heard about what happened on Danzig and the same thing as what happened at the Eaton Center were shaking their heads saying what has happened to our city. Well almost a year to the date we haven't had a shooting in and around the Danzig area. We've had a 75% reduction of shootings in 43 Division. Last year, there was a big fanfare made about the extra 329 officers out on the street, as well as mandatory overtime. Will that happen again this year to prevent any, any sort of repeat? Right now, we don't have a threat assessment that would require that. We don't have the level of violence uh, far from it. We've had a we've had a 22 percent reduction in overall crime in the city, uh, a 21 percent reduction in shooting offenses. We've had a very successful year in terms of suppressing crime right across the board and violent crime. And so we don't have the same circumstances that require that massive injection of, of visible uniform presence. In the days after Danzig, politicians and police pledged change. And this may surprise you. The promises have for the most part been kept. There is now permanent funding for both the Toronto and Provincial Anti-Violence Task Forces. Extra money has been pumped into Crime Stoppers. The GTA now has 30 new youth outreach workers and 270 new after-school jobs have been created for youth and policing. Toronto Housing has also lived up to its promise to install security cameras and they've agreed to turn one of the units here into a centre for community programs. Keep the kids involved. We have a homework program, a leadership uh, program for the youths. There's a cooking class. And residents say it's time to stop equating Danzig with tragedy. It definitely does not define Danzig. That doesn't define who we are. How do you feel this community has grown since the, the shooting a year ago? Honestly, I think people have gotten closer. They talk more. People that didn't talk before now are. People that were talking only a little bit now are their friends. Despite the changes, the lower crime rates and a community's desire to move on, summer has only just begun. Last year, it felt as though we were holding our breath every single night when we went to bed, waiting for what kind of shooting there was going to be the next morning when we woke up. Do you believe that the city is a safer city now when it comes to gang violence? I believe it is, but I hold my breath every night.
You still do. Yeah, I guess it's the job I have, the fact I live in the city and I have I have a young child. I'm hoping my Blackberry doesn't go buzzing across the night nightstand. Uh, I am confident that we have, we have a city and we as a, as a police service have made huge strides to bringing the levels of violence down. And uh, coming up next Thursday on The Inside Story, I'll take you back to Danzig to meet an 18-year-old who very well could be the face of positive change in a community that is shining on despite the tragedy there last summer. It's great work by police, but as we've seen in the past, gangbangers are not going to go away. The crucial thing here is for police to institute their programs, get their good work done before these uh, gangs attempt to make a comeback in the community. And the interesting thing that Deputy Slowly said, that out of this entire city of ours, there are about 2,000 people who are directly or indirectly involved in violent crimes mm -hmm. and even smaller number of those are involved gang makers as you, as you described but they do because of the access to weapons mm -hmm. have an ability to create mass destruction which we saw last summer and are crossing our fingers for that we don't see this summer Great. thank you you can reach out to avery on twitter the address at city avery the inside story runs every tuesday and thursday on city news all segments are up on our website citynews.ca